Hey everyone, it's Ryan Drew. I'm back with another one of these brush inking demos, this time of the nefarious Dr. Doom. This is an illustration by Jack Kirby of Dr. Doom and the Silver Surfer, and I'm gonna show you all how I ink this by hand. So, without further ado, let's get started. I'm using a paper that's a little bit thicker than usual and it goes to the printer pretty well still. You can print out your pencils on the front and it's got a nice cream, darker color tone to it. I'm using my trusty Winsor Newton Series 7 Kalinske Sable Brush size 1 for these. This is very good for 8.5 by 11 page size. It lets you hold enough ink but it also gives you very nice fine detail that you need. And my secondary tool here is my Tachikawa G pen nib and pen holder. I use this for the background details. It lets you have a nice, consistent, crisp line that you need for that, you know, background work objects kind of stuff. My ink of choice is Speedball Super Black Indie Ink. I find that it's a pretty rich matte black and it works really well with a brush. And I've got a little shot glass that I use to pour my ink in, just a little portable glass. I have a cup of water that I use to rinse my brush out after I've been inking for a stretch, and it's always good to rinse the ink out of your brush every once in a while. And I use some isopropyl alcohol to clean my pen nib every once in a while once the ink has dried on it because you don't want the ink to stay on your pen nib too long. Before I get started, I just pour a little bit of ink out into this shot glass that I showed you earlier. It just helps me to use as much as I need and to avoid getting watered out ink back into the ink bottle. When I start inking, I will slowly load the brush with ink and I will be careful not to get too much in there. Just wipe off the excess on the rim of the glass here. And what I will do after that is called tapering the brush point. I'll just roll out the ink brush a little bit at a time to get a nice crisp fine point because you want to start inking with a nice crisp point on your brush. I find it helpful to warm up first before I start inking. You just want to get your muscles working, you want to get the dexterity going in your hand and you want to get a little bit of that control on the brush. So I'll warm up with some circles, some lines. I'll just practice thick to thin. I'll practice thin lines. I'll practice trying to get that control of the brush because what you're trying to do when you ink with a brush is you're trying to master control of it. That's the goal. And of course, it's just a goal. I mean, the point is to get better and improve each time. So if you do this every time you warm up before you start inking, you will find that you will get better and your lines will be more consistent and solid and smooth flowing. So I think this helps, and I would suggest doing this for a few minutes before you start. Like I said, I start by tapering my brush point, and once I've done that a few times, you can see that I've got a nice crisp point to my brush, and this is what I want when I start inking because I'm inking with the point of the brush. So what I like to do is I always like to start with a face. I kind of rough that all in there, paying very close attention to the details, making sure I've got a nice, good representation there of the pencils. Once I've started with a face, then I start to move outwards and get the contour as well. And I think that if I start with the face, I start with the head of each character. It just lets me know if I've made a mistake, you know, early on. If you mess up the face and the head, it's probably a good idea to start over. But if you leave that for last, you might do a really good job and then kind of mess it up at the end. You can always fix it, but I like to just start here first mentally. It just helps me set up the mood. I try to do the exterior contour lines first. Sometimes I'll just go ahead and ink the whole character. Here I just kind of work my way down and around Dr. Doom. But I feel that when you start with doing the exterior contour lines and then you can kind of work your way in and then fill in the areas of black, it just helps things go a lot faster. However, again, in this one, you might see me skip it around. That's okay. Sometimes I just want to break up, you know, what I'm doing and, and fill in some areas of black here and there just to kind of finish that section of the drawing. 
And I'll work my way through Dr. Doom first, and once I've inked him, I will go down to the Silver Surfer and ink him as well. So Doctor Doom, he is one of the most iconic and enduring of the Marvel villains. He was created by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby. Um, I think, from what I understand, you know, Stan Lee kind of came up with the ideas and the concepts and he just kind of gave them to Jack Kirby. You know, the concept of the name and Kirby is the one really who fleshed out the character, kind of gave him the backstory, everything that was going into the character. He designed his look and, you know, gives him like a motive for his evil. So there is a documentary that was put out in 1987 called The Masters of Comic Book Art featuring some interviews with comic book creators by Ken Viola. Jack Kirby is interviewed about his inspiration for several of his heroes and his villains and what led to their creation. When he was asked about the visual design of Doctor Doom, Kirby explained that Doctor Doom was the classic conception of death, of approaching death. I saw Doctor Doom as a man in the iron mask who symbolized approaching death. It was the reason for the armor in the hood. Death is connected with armor and inhuman-like steel. Death is something without mercy, and human flesh contains that element of mercy. Therefore, I had to erase it, and I did it with a mask. So you can find this documentary on YouTube. I'll put a link to it below, but I thought it was a really cool inspiration behind the creation of Doctor Doom. While Doctor Doom first debuted in 1962 in issue number 5 of the original Fantastic Four comic run, his true origin story wasn't fleshed out by Lee and Kirby until Fantastic Four Annual Number 2, which was published in 1964. In this origin story, Victor Von Doom is the son of a gypsy medicine man and a sorceress woman in a kingdom called Latveria. When his father has to leave town after failing to heal the local baron's wife of her sickness, he takes young Victor with him and risks his life to get him to safety from the baron's retribution, only to die from this ordeal. Victor avows to avenge his deceased mother and his now deceased father in exact revenge on the baron. He discovers his mother's spell books and learns how to create mystical potions and spells to foil the baron and help his fellow gypsy tribe. One day, a recruiter for an American university shows up, having found out about Victor's exploits somehow, and he offers him a scholarship to attend school and develop his abilities, which Victor accepts. While at university, Victor meets a young Reed Richards of the Fantastic Four, and they almost become roommates, but Victor feels himself superior to Reed, so he declines. He has his own room so that he has the privacy he needs to develop his experiments in secret. So one day, Reed happens upon Victor's calculations for some unapproved matter transformation and dimensional warps, but he realizes that Victor's math is wrong. An enraged Victor ignores Reed's warning and he continues with his experiment, only to have it literally blow up in his face, disfiguring him severely. Victor can't bear this, and he flees civilization to run off to Tibet, where he hopes to learn more about black magic, only to be taken in by a tribe of forgotten Tibetan monks. He learns from them and eventually becomes their master, finally constructing his iconic suit of armor and mask and transforming himself into Dr. Doom. Victor Von Doom is dead and Dr. Doom has been born. He then heads back to Latveria where he strolls in and takes control from the Baron, declaring himself the monarch of Latveria. So from here, Doctor Doom goes on to torment the Fantastic Four because of his hatred of Reed Richards. 
and years later in Fantastic Four number 57, Doom succeeds in stealing the Silver Surfer's cosmic powers and surfboard, imprisoning the Surfer in his castle, and beginning a reign of terror against the Fantastic Four and eventually the whole world. Only when Reed Richards manages to trick Doctor Doom into flying right into the barrier that Galactus had placed around the Earth to contain the Silver Surfer is Doom finally seemingly destroyed and Silver Surfer's cosmic powers and surfboard are rightfully returned. So that is the inspiration for this illustration from Jack Kirby. This illustration is from 1973 and it shows the moment that Doctor Doom managed to steal the Silver Surfer's cosmic power. The composition here is pretty strong. Doctor Doom is standing boldly and victoriously over the Surfer having just stolen his power. The Surfer is slumped to the ground. He's clinging hopelessly to a surfboard that'll soon be taken from him, bracing himself against the reality that he has been deceived and overpowered by Doctor Doom. And you can see the power cosmic courses through Doom's body and it surges outward through his hands and up into the top right corner of the page. Kirby crackle and all, with Doctor Doom's castle in the lower left corner of the background to balance things out. I think the body language in this illustration is just unmistakable. For this moment, Doctor Doom has defeated the most powerful ally of the Fantastic Four in a guardian of the Earth, the Silver Surfer. His powers cosmic, these are a terrible power to fall into wrong hands, and now Doctor Doom has them in his full control. This is a good example of Kirby's compositional skills. There's a lot of power and energy in the juxtaposing a villain and hero here, and it's depicted first in body language of the two characters, but also personified in the bursting stream of Kirby crackle that ends in a universe of its own toward the top of the page. Kirby also expertly uses the Surfer's white surfboard to divide the compositional space evenly between Doom and the Surfer, which helps to heighten the tension between them. Doom's cape billows in the wind, his body coursing with newfound energy while the Surfer is slumped down and motionless under the weight of losing his powers. Okay, so it's time to rinse my brush out and take a break here. I'm gonna switch over to my ink pen, my pen nib. So I like to get as much ink out of the brush before I switch over. So as I said before, I like to use a pen nib for inanimate objects like the Surfer's Surfboard here. I'll also use it for background work, but I use it because I want to get a nice consistent line width and not have it being, you know, very thick and thin. I want it to be very consistent and I want this surfboard to look machined, right? It's got to look perfect. The lines have to look very methodical and machined, but it also gives you some variety when you can see here as I'm inking the rocks and doing the little shadows on them. It just lets you do a different texture for background objects. You can use the pen nib for cross hatching and other textures and you can see here that when you ink things like this background castle it lets get all of those fine details that you really can't get as easily with a brush pen. So now I'll do the background up here at the top. I like to start and outline the larger objects and the spheres before moving on to the Kirby Crackle. But first what I need to do is I need to take a minute here and rinse the ink out of my pen nib with some isopropyl alcohol. And once I've done that, I can switch over to my brush again. So for my recent video of inking the Silver Server illustration, I used a different method for doing the Kirby Crackle. It took a long time because I tried to do it separately, each dot separately, and it just took forever. 
So I found a video that showed a better way to do it. Basically what you do is you dip the back of your brush into ink and then you just dab it. You just go around and dab the ink out on the page. And I found that like the first dab that you do has the most ink and then it'll, it'll just be less from there obviously because the ink is running out. So you just figure out the best way to do it and you just go around and get a nice array of dots until you've got it kind of filled in. And now what I'm doing here is, I would say, basically the final step. I'm just going around and filling in all the large solid areas of black with a brush. It's very satisfying to get to this step because you start to see the illustration come together. Just filling in all these large areas of shadow and solid black. And then once I've done the background toward the top and filled that in, I just go through and do the final little Kirby crackle where it's needed on top of that. And the last thing here, pretty much done, but just signing my name as the inker after Jack Kirby. And that is it. Here is the final inked version of this illustration. And overall, I just really liked inking this. I thought it was a really strong composition. There's a lot of dynamics going on here. There's a really good balance of black and white, and it just kind of leads your eye all around the piece. And I really enjoyed using this new technique to get the Kirby crackle down. I think I've got a good handle on how to do it for future videos. So really happy about how this came out. And let me know what you guys think about the results here. Well, hey, thanks guys for watching this video and sticking around. And let me know below which Kirby character you want to see me ink next. Just leave me a comment. I will try to respond and maybe what you have suggested I will do next. We'll see. But overall, just thank you guys for sticking with me through this video. I hope that you guys got something out of this. If you are learning to ink with a brush, I hope this was practical for you and really showed you ways to go about this in your own artwork and to put these methods into use. So please like, share, subscribe, and let's keep this channel going. Until next time, thank you and God bless.